Just getting the doors assembled there. Sweet. And just like that, three doors. Man, those look sharp. So I elected to put the, the windows down at the six foot level. Originally, I was gonna put them up a little higher for security so people couldn't look in, but then I thought, well, does it really make that much of a, of a big deal? Because people can still look in that window. So I thought, why not just put them at the six foot level? And then when I'm in here in the winter time, I can look out the window and go, man, look at that snow blow. Nice and warm in here though. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, they did a great job. They spent the whole day working on this. So that's the, the reason they set those two by sixes in there is because that's the, uh, that's where it'll set down on the concrete. So as you can tell, we still gotta, we still gotta put a road crush in, which is gonna start tomorrow. And then uh, of course our six inches of concrete to raise that up. But let's see what kind of action they got going here. Oh, that's nice. Wow, they did a good job. That is smooth. <laughs> right on. Okay, on to the next thing. I unfortunately haven't been able to work since the accident. So, stuck in this thing, it sucks. But you know, at least I get a government disability check every month and you know, I keep getting one, you know, as long as I'm careful, so. got the gravel going in and leveling it all out and building the frame put a bunch of rebar it's actually new rebar you can get that's fiberglass cost is a lot less and supposedly the tensile strength is just as good but I elected to go with old school steel so anyway we'll let these guys keep working and set up the frame and we'll get some concrete tomorrow Ever give his name that's where he got eyes for the run in his vein A foot like lead and nerves like steel now That guy was an operator Oh, that's how it's done, folks boy. Oh, he even dumped his truck right in front of the other pile Look at how he wiggled the wagon beside the shop What a pro So yeah, this is our 12 inch on center grid. So they did their uh, five inches of road crush. Well, five or six inches, and then they compacted it down. It was probably four to five nominal now. And then they put poly as a vapor barrier. <laughs> you can see it's working. And then they set this grid up and they got these little trees to support the, to support the rebar. So it's sitting halfway up about three inches, halfway in the middle of the concrete to try and tie all this together and, and give it some structural strength. Cool. Now tomorrow what's gonna happen is they're gonna bring in a pumper truck and they'll back it up and then they'll just run the, uh, run the hose, start at the back and just start pumping concrete and level it all out and we'll have ourselves a floor. And these guys are getting an early start. The sun's barely coming up. You can see it off in the distance there. It's quite smoky from all the forest fires so it's sunrises and sunsets are kind of glowing red but yeah so that's the the pumper truck that's going to extend the arm all the way into the shop and then it's going to be the the concrete trucks that'll back up and dump into him and you know pump it in and then they can spread out all the concrete let's do a little time lapse see how it works <laughs> One truck, bring in another. Yeah, this is really cool. Goes actually goes pretty quick. Huh, isn't that neat? 
He was just saying it's like two pistons that go back and forth like a steam engine. And it pressurizes it up and then pumps it out and slugs the concrete. That's a pretty neat gimmick to kind of float the concrete. A little bit of a little bit of Honda power there. When I was young, my dad would, and I would just do it with a two by four going back and forth. So yeah, they're just working away trying to get this all smoothed out, crawling it up. is how you make a shop floor. Look at that, they power troweled this. Smooth as silk. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, now we'll let that harden up for a good 30 days and we'll park some trucks on it. Okay, enough shop talk. Let's get back to working on snowman. <laughs> Never get tired of looking at that truck. Okay, so if you've been following this build for a while, you'll know the last few episodes I've been trying to get the bunk, the goal has been to get the bunk back on the truck so we can uh, we can seal it up and put in that awesome interior from the day cap company. And so next I figured uh, I wanted to get some of the, the paint that I needed. And there's not a lot of information available on the Kenworth used in the Smokey and the Bandit movie. There's plenty out there on the Trans Am, but very little on the truck. So you kind of got to search around and, and, and try and get whatever information you can. And I did reach out to, there's a organization called the Snowman's Run. And there's a fellow named Adam that restored a Kenworth just like the movie truck. And he's got the Hobbs trailer and all that, it's just mint. And it's a, it's a great organization for a charity for um, supporting wounded veterans. And I reached out to him, I said, Adam, what codes did you use on your truck? And so he sent me the, the PPG codes. I think it was uh, 19 black is what he went with. And a lot of folks, if you just watch the movie quickly and you don't really study it, you might just think the truck was black. But if you actually pause it in certain spots and in certain light, there's a, there's a brown tinge to it. I think some people called the paint coat a, a coffee black. And so there is a little bit of brown in there. So I took those codes at 19 black to the uh, to the paint shop and they said well we don't do ppg but we can have we can try and cross reference it so they they blended up a batch and they just threw it in a spray bomb for me to try it out and it you know at first glance it's it's a it's a very light black and more of a chocolate brown so i threw some down there on the, the back of the cab last night i just wanted to see how it would how it would dry and look and as you can see in certain lights at certain angles it is very dark, like off the side here, it's almost black, but I don't know, I, I'm not convinced. Like there's definitely brown in the in certain scenes of the movie truck, but I'm thinking that might be, that might be a little too brown. So maybe I'll get, we'll throw this down here as a, as a first coat, but maybe I'll get another batch made up with a, with a touch more black, just to try and get it a little closer to the movie truck. But, Again, you're never going to see this once the bunk's on there. So this is kind of my trial and error. And I'm just doing a single stage now uh, because it's not, it's not really that important in behind, but it's good practice. But what I'll do is once the bunk's on and we, we take it all down, we do all the body work and I put it in there, my paint booth, what we'll do is we'll do a base clear. So obviously you just do the base coat of whatever color I finally settle on. And we let that dry and then I'll mask off uh, the areas that I want gold and then we'll paint that gold and then we'll take all that off and then we'll spray the whole truck with with clear and I I don't know we'll uh we'll see how I do on the back here but I'm thinking who knows maybe I might try try and paint this myself 
it's a it's a new challenge for me and i'm kind of i'm kind of digging it i don't know how it'll turn out so please keep commenting down below give me tips i do read all the comments and i really appreciate when people give insights and uh, and good suggestions on on what i could do differently or how i could make this easier and turn out the best that i can because that's these all these restorations i'm just doing the best i can with what i have the skills that i got and the and the few dollars i have in my pocket so we'll just keep pressing forward here and we'll we'll spray this all down and we'll we'll see what it looks like we'll see what it looks like when the whole panel's painted okay so after i got those three layers of primer on last week it's still a little still a little rough so i thought i'd hit it with some 320 it's some real fine sandpaper we'll just do a final flattening of that to try and kill any imperfections or any little rough spots and then i did buy same place i got the paint they sold me some uh some degreaser here so they told me just wipe it down gently just wipe it in one direction rather than trying to swirl around all the all the dirt and dust and just wipe all that off of there and then we'll try and put some of that uh, that paint down and see how it turns out I should change the name of this channel to Rattle Can Garage. <laughs> but that's not too bad. I've got a lot of headwinds out here trying to, to paint outside with, with spray bombs and a bit of a breeze, but I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Doesn't look too shabby. And if you get off angle, that's pretty darn close to the movie truck color. But straight on, I'm I just I'm not quite convinced. We'll see how it dries, but. I guess it's a little too brown to match the movie, but it's not too bad. Maybe we'll get another batch of black and just put another top coat on there and just go a touch darker, but let me know what you think. So as I was waiting for the paint to dry there, I was gonna dive into sanding down the, the bunk and doing the exact same thing. But as I was trying to walk around and walk over all my tools, I realized that it has been way long overdue to kind of reset my shop and put everything away. So what I normally do on a Saturday is I work right till, you know, the evening, supper time, and then I just pile up all the stuff from my from that episode, and I slam the door closed, and I go and have a cold one with the missus. But it had got to the point where I couldn't find anything anymore, and as I was putting tools away, I was finding stuff from when I did the power steering box and the peat. So, again, long overdue. So I took a couple hours to reset everything in here, and as I was lifting the cardboard up to sweep the floor, I took a look at that and I went, oh shit. You know what that is? That's the uh, box full of asbestos. Well, I hope it isn't asbestos, it's probably just insulation, but given the age of the truck, you never know. But anyway, what those boxes are for is they're to prevent this hot exhaust pipe from starting your wooden floor on fire. And since I forgot to put them in, I, I could probably get to the two screws on this side, but on the other side of the exhaust pipe, the tranny's in the way. So I don't know how I'm gonna drill the screws to, to mount it in there. And I hate like hell to have to lift the floor. They did such a good job putting these in and when you take them out, they never go in quite as tight. So, darn, oh well, uh, nothing like some good rework, but we'll get those we'll get those little tin boxes in there So we'll start our floor on fire and then I thought well You don't need to watch me sand down the bunk. You've already watched me do that on the truck. So rather than drive excessive boredom on this channel I thought we'll pivot and we'll do something a little different. So a couple years ago when I got the, um, the Interior from the day cab company for the peat they sent me two kits. They make both uh, carpet floor kits and a rubber floor kit. And I obviously use the carpet one in the peat, but I've still got the rubber floor kit. So that's what I was planning to put in here in the peat, or in the peat, in the Kenworth. So what we'll do is after I get those boxes in, put the Noiko sound deadening material on here, which will raise it up hopefully to that, uh, that edge there. And it'll be nice and level. 
and then I'll maybe do the, the cardboard cutout and we'll unroll that mat and we'll try and cut it out and see if we can't put a, put a rubber floor in this truck. Yeah, so sure enough, I wasn't able to do it from underneath. So that actually wasn't that bad. I just backed the uh, screws out a little ways. Now, of course, one of these is stripped. The, all the other ones are fine. So I'm gonna pry that off of there. But, oop, that was a little soft. Now I should probably be wearing a mask messing with this stuff. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Just in case there's some fibers in there that we don't want in our lungs. Well, at least I caught it before I was driving with Mrs. Twin Sticks and all of a sudden the floor started getting warm. That would have been bad. All right. What's the best kind of work? Rework. So I actually removed this plate. This was in here on top of the plywood. Uh, when I took the original seat out. So the the driver's air ride seat isn't actually bolted just to the plywood. It's actually got some metal to give it a little more strength so it doesn't rock around and rip through the plywood. So we'll we'll reuse this. I'll probably paint it up and then we'll, we'll bolt it in uh, around the outside so it's a little more solid. But on the passenger seat, the passenger jump seat is just that fiberglass shell that bolts to the wood, but it doesn't have as much leverage because if you think about it, an air ride seat's gonna go up and then it's going to rock it's really going to pull and if a guy didn't put in a metal plate of some sort it could just rip the bolts or the uh, washers and bolts right out of the wood so we'll clean this up and we'll go ahead and put this back in here and i'll probably need a new piece of trim i think i had to zip cut this one or maybe it was zip cut to get past the the frame of the air ride seat but either way we'll wire wheel this up we'll clean it up and we'll uh, we'll bolt it in <laughs> Yeah, the more I walk back and forth, the more I think that color just isn't right. But that's okay, it's an easy fix. And, and just like Edison said, when he invented the light bulb, he said, I didn't, uh, I didn't fail a thousand times, I just invented something that took a thousand steps. So in the spirit of that, we'll, uh, we'll get that paint corrected. So now what I'm trying to do is put the, the Noico sound editing mat on the, on the back tin when I get the nice floor mat in here I don't want to be jumping around doing the insulation and the and the and this stuff so we'll put that on first and then we'll we'll tackle the floor got the the mat and the insulation in the back of the cab and the cab corners now I'm going to start laying it out on the floor and I'm not going to overlap it I'm just going to cover up the wood right up to the 
to the seam there because I want to be able to, if I need to take the floor out, uh, I want to be able to. So now what I'm going to do is mark where the, where the screws are. Again, in case I ever need to, to take this thing out of here. I'll want to know where those are so I can just take them out and remove the floor. So with this section, I'm actually going to, I'm going to lay out the sound deadening mat everywhere and then we'll put that piece of aluminum in there and then I'll probably double up to get the same thickness where the aluminum uh, uh, sheet stops. Just so it's the same all the way across. Yeah. Okay, something like that. So that's starting to, to come together, liking the way the, the cab's looking here. But like all jobs, it's taken a lot longer than I had expected. And it's starting to get deep into the day here and into the evening. And kids are already asking me if I can run and get some pizza. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. But tune in to the next episode where we try another color. And we'll see if we can't make this format from the day cab company fit into project snowman egotistical son of a bitch any guy that would paint his truck like this would go to a minister's funeral dressed in feathers <laughs>